I earned $338,000 as a full-time creator this year, and I'm gonna show you how I did it without a massive YouTube audience. I see a lot of videos here on YouTube breaking down how creators are making huge amounts of money and inevitably a huge part of their success is tied to their YouTube channel, not just in AdSense and channel sponsorships, but because of their size and influence. Well, I just started on YouTube in the middle of 2022 and so far I've made an estimated $15 in AdSense, but I was still able to earn nearly $350,000 as a creator. That doesn't include any income from real estate or investing, that's purely income generated by the business. I hope that by sharing this, I can highlight a few unique ways that you can earn a living as a creator without relying on a single platform like YouTube. I'll show you how you can get started earning income from these different revenue streams today and stick around because at the end of this video, I'll share which income stream I'd focus on if I were starting over. But first, there are a few things you should know about me to put this all into perspective. I've been creating content since 2017. My business started with an email newsletter and evolved into an audio podcast. And today, that podcast is in video as well here on the channel. I started the year with about 13,000 followers on Twitter, 10,000 email subscribers, and 33,000 downloads per month on my podcast. So I wasn't starting from nothing, but these aren't the biggest audience numbers either. The year before, in 2021, I earned $149,953. So less than half of what I earned this year. I earned income from 41 different income sources, but I'd really categorize them into seven main buckets. Let's start with the smallest income stream, which is patronage. This is when someone gives you money just to support your work. Sometimes it's called tipping. You may be familiar with a tool like Patreon, but I had been using an app called Buy Me A Coffee and really enjoyed it. The interface is clean. It was kind of fun to add Buy Me A Coffee to my email newsletter, my podcast episodes, and people would donate about $5 at a time just to say thank you for creating content. It feels really nice to see that people appreciate your work so much that they'll actually just thank you with their wallets. This year, I earned $223.83 from Buy Me A Coffee, which was less than 1% of my total income. Moving forward in 2023, I'm actually going to remove Buy Me A Coffee just because I think the goodwill you earn by creating and sharing free content with your audience is actually more valuable than cashing in for a few bucks. After patronage, we see a big jump in revenue with affiliates. You earn affiliate revenue when you help someone else make a sale. You get rewarded with a small percentage commission of that sale. You see it a lot here on YouTube. Creators will put links in their episode descriptions for certain products or services, and they get a small kickback because of it. Usually those percentages of what gets paid to you are somewhere between five and 30% of the total sale. This year, I earned $20,504.76 from my affiliates, which is about 6% of my overall income. Now here's a crazy part. I I actually earned some affiliate revenue from 26 different affiliates. Remember when I said I had 41 total income streams? Well, most of them are affiliates, but most of those affiliate partners earned me just a little bit of revenue. Four of them though, earned 80% of the total. Two of my largest affiliates are Circle, which I use as the software for my membership community, and ConvertKit, which I use for my email newsletter. The great thing about software companies as affiliates is that they typically sell a subscription. So they will often pay you a commission every month that a customer continues to renew their subscription. So if you work with software companies that have really great products, you can earn a commission every month for a long time. If there's a product or service that you use and love, search for their name in the term affiliate program to see if they offer one publicly. It's usually a pretty straightforward process for becoming an affiliate, but if you can't find anything, reach out to the company directly because most companies would love for you to send them more customers. Next, we have the revenue generated from my own digital products, which are an amazing income stream, probably my favorite. The big idea here is that once you create a digital product, you can sell that same product over and over and over again without any additional effort and at a very low cost. These include things like online courses, eBooks, presets, templates, workshops, and more. The world of education is really opening up right now and people are realizing that they'd often rather learn from a creator they like rather than a professor they've never met at some expensive university. This year, I earned $31,768.25 from digital products, which is about 9% of my overall income. My digital products are mostly pre-recorded courses. I've developed about a dozen online courses, ranging in price from $40 for a workshop to $399 for an in-depth course with 36 lessons and five hours of video. There's still a lot of opportunity here. So if you have a lot of knowledge about a certain topic, developing a digital product like an online course could be life-changing for you. But you can make use of a course marketplace like Skillshare or Udemy that attract learners from all over the world. That will get your course in front of potential students and help you to build a name for yourself. 
In fourth place is income from royalties. These are fees paid to someone who owns some type of intellectual property that another party is benefiting from. Royalties are usually talked about in the music industry, book publishing, or someone who owns a patent. You hear Mr. Wonderful talk about royalties a lot on Shark Tank. This year, I earned $34,020.20 from royalties, which was 10% of my overall income. This is kind of a rare circumstance for a lot of creators, but I'm an author for LinkedIn Learning, LinkedIn's built-in course library. I've created seven courses with LinkedIn Learning, and this is actually a publishing agreement. Every month, LinkedIn pays me a royalty for the intellectual property that we turned into a course that they are permitted to use on their platform. Royalties are like the most passive income you can earn once you develop some IP. Some creators earn royalties by selling their designs on websites like Society6 or Redbubble. Other creators earn royalties from book sales. And some producers earn royalties by selling their music on websites like Soundstripe. So if you're someone who creates unique designs or produces music, this is an option to consider. Coming in just above royalties is service-based income. This is probably the easiest income stream to get started with. Services just mean selling your time and expertise for money. This could be freelancing, coaching, consulting, or something similar. This year, I earned $37,075.67 from services, which was about 11% of my overall income. And most of that came from one-on-one -on -one coaching and consulting. You can get started by freelancing. If you're a designer, you can start selling design projects, or if you're a developer, you can help people build websites. You can help with marketing or copywriting. Whatever your skill set is, you can probably earn money doing it. And you don't need to have a fancy website, a perfectly automated system, or a huge audience. All you need is a skill. If you don't have an audience to sell your services to, consider using a marketplace like Upwork. After services, we have a pretty big step up to our second highest income stream, sponsorship. This is when another company is paying to be promoted or mentioned in your content. You've probably seen it here on YouTube. It's actually sort of like affiliate revenue, but instead of being paid based on how well you sell a product, the brand pays you up front. And this is growing a lot on YouTube. This year, I earned $52,809.63 from sponsorship, which was about 15% of my overall income. That comes from two different digital properties, my newsletter and my podcast. My podcast, Creative Elements, generated 54% of that sponsorship total, and my newsletter, Creator Science, was 46%. Now, as this channel grows, you'll probably start to see sponsorship here on YouTube as well. The biggest thing you need to understand about sponsors is that they are looking for an ROI return on investment. That typically means they wanna know that if they give you a dollar, they're gonna earn more than a dollar in return. So the more money a sponsor gives you, the more you need to help them earn back if you want them to keep sponsoring you. So if you have a small audience, look for sponsors who have a higher priced product or service. That way they don't need a ton of sales from your content in order for the sponsorship to be worth it. An example here is instead of working with a brand that sells a $25 t-shirt, work with a service provider who sells projects in the hundreds or even thousands of dollars. Because if you receive $1,000 for a sponsorship, that's a lot of t-shirts you need to sell to show that sponsor a return on investment. Finally, the largest revenue driver for my business this year is my membership community. Memberships are subscription products that someone buys for continued access to some product, service, or experience. In my case, people join the lab to access me and a whole community of professional creators. This year, I earned $161,087.87 with the lab, which is almost 48% of my total income. The craziest thing about this is that I launched the lab in March of last year. So that's all new revenue in my business from the year before. I built the lab to be small by design. We have a ton of educational content, live events, and a community forum inside of there. It's actually where I'm spending a lot of my own time and energy. Since I'm putting so much effort into the lab, and because it's for more advanced creators, it has a higher price point. $14.99 per year. One of the best parts of selling a membership is that you get to know who your biggest fans are. They are the ones funding your work instead of some sponsor, and you get to help them achieve their goals too. Memberships can come in a lot of different forms, but they're typically pretty time intensive. Unlike digital products that you can create and sell over and over and over again, a lot of the value in a membership is the interaction between members. And that's something that takes a long time to foster, so it's not exactly passive income. But if you really love working with people and you wanna find a way to scale that interaction, a membership might be a good fit. Because of the lab, I was able to invest more money into my creative projects this year than ever before. Things like this YouTube channel. 
So that's my breakdown of the seven income streams that earned me nearly $350,000 this year. I don't have the biggest audience in the world, but the people who do follow me have often followed me for years and they have a lot of trust in me. And that trust means that when I create my own products like courses or my membership, they take the leap in joining me. If I were to choose one of those income streams that I'd focus on to start, it would be digital products. They're low cost, they're the most scalable, and if you make a great product that your audience loves, your income will then grow at the same rate that your audience does. If you don't have an audience today, it's not too late to start building. And there are other ways to earn an income quickly, by putting your products on some of the marketplaces that I mentioned, or by going into existing communities and being one of the most helpful, visible members in there. If you do that, you'll start building a reputation and eventually your own audience. And an audience is one of the most valuable assets that you can build in 2023. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment and let me know. If you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them in the comments. Be sure to check out some of my other videos where I interview other incredible creators about how they earn money in their businesses. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. I'll be back with another video very soon.